So as it turns out, you really can download more FPS. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously. And not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below a other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9 to 12 percent, depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. So you might've heard the goofy ah meme about downloading more RAM or downloading more FPS. And yes, it was a silly meme up until maybe now, as Nvidia just released a new update to the Nvidia app, which I'll bring up in just a second here, which does actually double your FPS in games or roughly double. And yes, it does make them actually a lot more playable and a lot more enjoyable. Now you might think this is crazy, but I'll show you in just a second that it's not. Now the setting that I'm talking about here, if we open up the Nvidia app, move over now to the graphic settings and let's take a look at, for example, Elden Ring Night Rain. Now this is a game which is locked to 60 frames per second, but this new setting in the Nvidia app, which is called Smooth Motion, will actually bypass that and allow you to get 120 frames per second. And yes, it does really work. In fact, it works so well that I'm no longer gonna be playing this game without this setting on. And it's a godsend because unlike other solutions, not only do I not have to modify the game or potentially put myself at risk of getting banned, but also it still allows me to use all of the RTX HDR and other HDR features that I'd want to. And that just makes it overall a much better experience. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a before and after of it off versus it on, just so you can see how big of a difference this makes. And then we'll look at another game as well so you can see that yes, this setting is the real deal. So here we are in the game and we are indeed locked to 60 frames per second, or as you can see in the top left corner, it's saying 59 frames per second. I am using frame view, so it will very accurately tell us what the actual frames on our monitor are. And I do recommend downloading frame view if you don't have it, and I'll have it linked in the description below. But if you go ahead and you take a look here, I'm gonna just run around the table. And you know what, to be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad. But it's certainly not my favorite. And while it looks okay in some slow panning motion here, if I start to speed things up, well, it does start to look quite blurry. And it also just feels a little bit sluggish at 60 FPS. And I feel like this game would be so much better at 120. So let's go ahead and now boot it up with the smooth motion setting on, which by the way, is effectively frame generation for every single game. Okay, so here we are back in Elden Ring Night Rain. I have just enabled smooth motion and we are now sitting at 120 frames per second. And I can tell you immediately, my God, does this look so much better. The difference between 60 and 120 FPS in gaming is a huge difference, even on a controller. And it's certainly a even larger difference when you're using a keyboard and mouse. However, because this is frame generation, well, the latency isn't gonna be going down. In fact, if anything, it will actually go up, although ever so slightly. And you might be wondering, you know, am I noticing the difference at all? Because sure, visually it looks much, much better, but if it feels worse, well, you probably won't wanna play it that way. And I'll tell you on a controller that I'm using right now, no, I, I genuinely cannot, after closing and reopening the game, tell the difference in latency between the frame generation off versus frame generation on. Now, to be fair, if I was to use a mouse and keyboard, which is a more direct input, would I feel it? Probably yes, but this is a game you'd be playing on a controller for the vast majority of people. And to be honest with you, I would happily make the trade-off of a very small increase in latency, likely somewhere between eight to 10 milliseconds to get a vastly superior image quality. And speaking of image quality, I honestly cannot, just looking at it right now, see any visual errors on the screen from the frame generation. Something has been improved here because when they first launched the RTX 50 series, I flipped this setting on and it was horrible. But fast forward to today, 
that's not the case. Now, if I was to slow down the footage and zoom in at stuff and really pixel peep, could I maybe find some visual errors? I'm sure I could. Okay, here's one, one little spot that I can see some frame generation issues. So it looks like heavy foliage plus super fast motion around the character. You might see a little bit of issues with blurring, but let's go ahead and now launch a second game and see how it works. And then we'll get to the conclusions. All right, so here we are in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and I absolutely love this game. It's a treat, but this game is kind of hard to run if you're using, you know, 4K display and you're maxing out the experimental graphics and using RTX HDR, all that nonsense. It gets pretty hard to run. And as you can see in the top left corner, the original frame rate is popping up at 98 frames per second, which to be honest with you is actually pretty good. I mean, that's definitely playable, but you know me, I want the most visual information I can get. I want the highest frame rate. And so I've enabled smooth motion. And you might be wondering, you know, now that I'm using a keyboard and mouse, does this feel bad? Does it feel like it's high latency? And I'll tell you this, it does feel like the latency is a little bit higher than when it was off. I mean, again, we're talking probably eight to 10 milliseconds. That's common for using frame generation with NVIDIA graphics cards. However, it doesn't feel bad. It, it really doesn't. Even on a keyboard and mouse, it doesn't feel bad. But because there is a lot of foliage in this game, I do notice that this is visually worse than A, no frame generation at all, of course, but also it's visually worse than say, using an inherent frame generation built into a game. If you have frame generation built into a game, it's always gonna be a little bit better. But I will say, despite the fact that there are some minor issues on foliage areas, I do think the overall image is actually very good and does look a lot cleaner than having it off because smooth motion can be used in every single game, as far as I'm aware. So. That makes it just an absolutely great option for those of you out there with high frame rate displays where you just can't quite reach that frame rate. And this is a setting I'm gonna be using in a lot of games. In fact, you know, you can see here going from 98 to 196 frames per second in the top left. That is a huge, huge improvement to the visual quality of the image. As you can see, to be honest with you, there's a lot of games out there and especially older games that have issues with locking the frame rate. And that is a horrible experience. I don't want to see that. And this new setting, Smooth Motion, allows you to just completely bypass that restriction, get all of your HDR and overlays working. You never have to exit out a game. You can invite your friends whenever you want to, that one singular friend that you don't have. And it just works great. So yes, if you don't have the NVIDIA app and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, definitely give it a download, give Smooth Motion a try. Let me know in the comments below whether you think Smooth Motion is worth using and enabling. How does it compare to say AMD's alternative because they have their own alternative in their graphics cards? And how does it compare to both native as well as frame generation built into a game? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.